Hi, today I'm going to show you the simplest way I know to create flowing clothing in Maya. I'm starting out with a character mesh that I'd like to place clothing on. And um, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a box. And I'm going to move the box up. So what I'm going to do is scale this box so that it closely fits the legs as best as possible. Um, and the feet come out about where the bottom of the dress would like to be. Now what I'm going to do is select the box. And then I'm going to go to the attribute editor and I'm going to go to polycube shape, which is creating the box and increase the number of subdivisions to 16 on all three axes so that we have a lot more polygons for this box. <clears throat> now what I need to do is I need to make holes for where the body goes through the clothing. So what I'm going to do is hold down the right mouse button and then choose face mode so I can select faces, hold down shift while I drag and select the faces that correspond to this to the body. You can see in the back that it accidentally selects uh, more faces than I want. So I'll hold down control and then drag to remove these. I'm going to continue to remove faces until I have what represents the gap where the body will go through. Now I'm going to click delete to delete those faces. This creates the space where the body goes through the clothing. For the bottom, I'm going to make it an open dress. So I'm just going to literally select all the faces on the bottom. Um, you can do this just by holding down shift and selecting, but remember that it might select faces in the back. So I'm going to go to the side and then hold down control and deselect all of those that are um, visible above. I can click delete and it will delete those faces. Getting this topology is the, the important part of what we're doing at this stage. If we did this for the upper body, if we made a dress for the top, We'd also have to make uh, delete faces for the holes for the arms. It's important that the body does not touch the dress in any place. Now the next step is to make this a simulatable object. So the first thing we're going to do is switch over to FX mode. I'm going to select the cube object and go to end cloth, create end cloth. Um, it should come in as a separate object. You'll see here on the left in the outliner. If you don't have the outliner, you can go to windows, outliner and that will show the outliner. The way that this works is the cloth needs to collide with the body. We want the cloth to kind of bounce off of the body. So I'm going to select the body. Now I'm going to go to end cloth, create passive collider, and that will create, a, the body will be a collider. I also probably want a ground in case the dress touches the ground. So I'm gonna create a ground plane. I scale that plane up and now I go to end cloth again and create passive collider. There are several settings on this I need to do before I actually try and simulate it. So I select the cloth and now I open up the collisions area and I set the friction to 0.5 and the stiffness to 0.5. I can also go to dynamic properties and set the mass to a, a little bit lighter so it feels like a lighter material. And I also want to increase the strength a stretch resistance so that this is not a very bouncy cloth. So I'm going to set that to 50. The other setting I need, should do first is go to Nucleus. Nucleus is the thing that's actually doing the simulation itself. And I want to open up the solver attributes um, in the panel for Nucleus and set sub steps to 16 and max collision durations to 16. With those settings, I should now be able to simulate if you see at the bottom now, we have this additional bar that's orange. That bar represents the cache for the simulation. And if I click play, we're going to see that the clothing just falls down and, um, and rests at the feet. So with a very few steps and maybe only a few settings, we're able to start out and creating a cloth simulation. Uh, now the trick is that we obviously want the dress to stay up. And so it's very similar to in the real world, we need some kind of belt or something that ties the dress to the body or holds the dress on the body. The way to do that is as follows. We're going to zoom in and have a closer look here. We select the mesh object first. Now we right click and do vertex mode. We select one vertex with a left click. Now holding down the shift button, we double click on the one right next to it that is in line with the loop. So I'm going to click the double click the one next to it that automatically selects the loop that represents the band. Now we also need to select the mesh itself, and this is a little tricky. Control click on the base female or the base mesh um, in your outliner, 
And what you want to see is that the vertices of the waistband selected and the mesh of the body are selected. Now we go to end constraint and we select point to surface. If you did this correctly, you should see dotted lines indicating that those vertices are now kind of linked or constrained to the waist. If you were to do like a, a tank top or some upper portion of a dress, you don't even need this constraint because it will rest on the shoulders. But we do need it for the waist because otherwise it will just fall down. So now if we click play, so I'm going to go back to the beginning and see how it starts out and click play. And you'll see that the dress is now flowing and it hangs there. So what's interesting about this is you can see that there are creases in this dress. Um, and those creases actually just correspond to if this was actually made in this way. If you made a dress out of fabric that had square corners like this, then it would sit like this with those seams. So it is actually trying to realistically simulate what you've created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the sculpting tools. Um, before I do that, I want to go to nucleus and disable the simulation because I don't want the simulation to occur while I'm actually trying to sculpt the dress. I don't want it to try and keep recalculating stuff. So I've just temporarily disabled, turned off enable on the simulator for nucleus so that I can continue to sculpt the sculpt them the clothing. Now I'm just going to go to the sculpting tool and I can come in and use the sculpting tool like I would any other mesh. I'm using the smooth to smooth out those edges and take the corners down. So I can just literally come in here and sculpt this dress in whatever shape I want to. The main thing is making sure that the dress doesn't interpenetrate the skin. I could add these ruffles like this by just adding stripes in the dress. Hold down the control button if I want to do negative. You can see that I'm creating kind of some negative space here. And this, you're actually changing the shape of the dress, the three-dimensional shape of the dress. Maybe we want it to bell out a little bit at the bottom, so maybe I'll use a bigger brush and just um, go around the bottom of it and bell out the bottom of it a little bit. So now I'm going to go back to Nucleus and turn Nucleus back on and see what happened. When I click Enable, it starts simulating. I can see that with the orange bar. I'm just going to wait a minute to let it do the simulation. And now I'm going to click Play. And you can see that it sits much more naturally. The next thing I notice is that the waist doesn't actually conform, is not close enough to the body. I actually want this waistband to be close to the body. So in order to do that, I would want to come in and select vertex mode and actually move these vertices in. So I'd, now I can select each individual one and just move it closer to the body. I'm selecting this plane because I don't want to move it in three dimensional space. I want to only move it along this axis. So I'm moving this close to the body and don't make sure it doesn't go through the body or into the body. I want to just bring it close enough that it's close to the surface. So you may need to remove the point constraint. This is called dynamic straight on the left here. I might need to recreate this if it gets messed up. So I'm going to delete that point constraint and I'm going to recreate the point constraint. And now I go to end constraint, point to surface, and it should recreate that. I've made sure that nucleus is enabled, and now I'm ready to play again. I let it run for a few frames to calculate, and now I click play, and I can see that it sits um, on the waist as I would expect. And if I zoom out, I can see that it looks quite, it looks quite natural. So the last thing we might want to do is add wind to make this more realistic, and that's very easy to do. We just open up Nucleus, and we open up the section called Gravity and Wind. And under Nucleus for Gravity and Wind, we can see that there's gravity and there's uh, wind direction. We want the wind direction to come from the right, right, I mean from the left. So that would be 100 for the x-axis. And now we just set the wind speed to say 10. Um, you can see this arrow represents the wind speed. It will recalculate, and then we can run this and see what happens. That's actually quite a lot, so maybe we want the wind to be less. We can make it three. And now after we recalculate, we can play this again and see that we have wind blowing from the side. If we want to add some turbulence to this, we can easily add turbulence by going under wind noise. We can set the amount of noise in the, in the wind. There we go. Now we have a dress blowing in the wind. We can actually go in and increase the resolution of the cube and add a lot more detail in the wrinkles. 
So only do this if your computer is able to handle it, and you should know right away. But we can go back to modeling. We can choose the polycube, the cube, and then do mesh smooth, and add twice as many uh, triangles to this mesh. And now if we play this, we're going to get a more detailed simulation of the cloth. So that's it. I've shown you a simple, easy way to create flexible clothing using Maya.